welcome to Bar Z. My name is Stan, and uh, we're coming up on the home stretch here on the first eight ovens that we built. Uh, these are the completed units here. Um, I'm still test firing some, and we're going to talk about a few things that uh, is gonna, are going to change in the future. Um, first of all, I'm going to run through the spec. Everyone asks me, what, do they do this? Do they do that? What size is it? Voltage? Blah, 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 whatever. I'm going to go ahead and read down the full list of everything in the spec. Uh, these are the mechanical features. Um, the ovens are built out of a 20 gauge 304 stainless uh, brush number four finish. It's got a two inch KO wool board insulation in the walls and the ceiling. Uh, it's got a one inch high density floor uh, with a one inch KO wool backer in the floor. And I'm going to go over the different types of uh, insulations here with you shortly. Um, the working dimensions are six high, six wide, and 10 inches deep and that gives you a total of 360 cubic inches. Um, let's talk about the electrical features. Uh, it uses a Novus temperature controller, model number N1030. Uh, it's capable of Fahrenheit or centigrade, your choice. Um, it, it also has a dual display, so it'll display your set point and your actual temperature in tandem. Um, it's a single process timer, so it's uh, it does have a, a timer in there, but it won't do ramps and soaks, but it does have a timer installed. It uses an iDeck uh, SSR, uh, 50 amp rated. Uh, it's got a heat sink on the SSR and it's forced uh, air cooled. It's got a 120 millimeter cooling fan with a uh, auto cool down feature. Um, it's got thermal protection in the uh, panel cover. It's a push to reset type breaker, uh, which covers just the element. It's got um, overload protection for the controls, which is inside the cabinet, and it takes a small glass fuse. So your controls are protected and your element is protected both. Um, it has a heat enable switch on it, so that if you're changing parts quickly on the fly, you can kill the element, get the door open, get your parts in and out, and uh, go back to uh, heating without trying to push buttons on that little controller. Just, uh, you know, just uh, slap that switch real quick and get in and out. Uh, it's got a control power switch, uh, which drops out all the controls, and that in turn drops out the uh, element too. Uh, what it does not drop out is the cooling fan. It's got an automatic cool down on it. As long as it's plugged into the wall, the cooling fan is going to cycle automatically. Uh, it's got an easy to read nameplate. Uh, actually, those these just came in. These are hard anodized on aluminum backs. Very nice. So that's uh, about thirty thousandths thick and. Uh, Beautiful nameplates. Um, I was very satisfied with those, and the artwork for those is courtesy of Mr. James Harrell over at James Harrell Design. Go check him out. JamesHarrellDesign.com. Uh, where was I? Easy to read nameplate. Okay, uh, it uses a kiln grade Type K thermocouple. I'm not using the eBay cheapies. Uh, we are using a, a nice, heavy thermocouple. It's got ceramic connector blocks and ceramic element isolators which are the porcelain tubes where you pass through the bulkheads of the uh, oven. Uh, uses a heavy duty cord with a 20 amp plug, 20 amp, it's a special. It's got a, it's got a flat and a vertical spade on it, but it's a full on 20 amp. Uh, the oven's fully grounded, control and shell both. All right, the performance of the hot shot, uh, let's go over a few of the things. Uh, it, as I said before, it requires a 120 volt, 20 amp supply voltage. Uh, it's got a 2,000 watt heating element. Uh, we're looking at about a 17.8 full load amps on the entire oven. Uh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit is the maximum operating temperature. Uh, the performance is it'll do ambient to 1,200 degrees in 20 minutes. That's from a cold, empty oven. It'll do ambient to 1,500 degrees in 30 minutes. That's with a cold, empty oven. It'll do ambient to 1,700 degrees in 40 minutes. That's with a cold, empty oven, and it'll do ambient to 2,000 degrees in 50 minutes. And that's from a cold, empty oven. Uh, they're fully assembled and bench tested before shipment. So that's my spec sheet that I've been sending out to everyone. A lot of people are asking tons of questions about it. So I uh, just thought I'd uh, announce that. All right, let's talk about uh, the insulation. Now, this is the this is a medium density kale wool board. This is what I use to insulate walls. Oh, let me move that. There we go. Okay, um, I use two one inch boards to insulate the walls, the ceiling, 
in the back and then right below the floor. Now, and what, we're, what we're doing on the first eight is a ceramic floor. And this is this medium density board here. And the ceramic floor is a refractory brick that I cast myself. So this is just a hard, heavy, like a fire brick, okay? But I, I needed a very specific size, so I cast it myself um, out of refractory cement, all right? So I, we've got floors, and they're problematic because they take a lot of drying time, 72 hours out in the sun, uh, then you got to ramp them up really slow. They, combined, you need about eight hours of baking time per floor, and it's taking me quite a bit of time to get through all these ovens. Now you'll notice this oven, that floor is chalk white. I'll even put up a picture there. So that's a, that, that floor is fully cured. When they're chalk white like that, they're good to go. Now, this one is uncured. This one's been out in the sun for 72 hours. You see how dark it is? There's still a ton of moisture in there. And if I heat this up too quick, it'll just shatter. And uh, curing these things and the time curing each individual brick uh, without one larger oven is uh, problematic for me. So I was talking to the people over at, a, a, it's called Foundry Supply, Foundry and Refractory Supply. And I was talking about this medium board and how I didn't like that it's really soft and you're dragging parts in and out. And he goes, why don't you use a high density board? I said, I didn't even know they made anything like that. So he turned me on to this, this stuff here. This is what they call a high density board and it's almost got a shell on it. And it's, it, it cuts a little more difficult than the, than the uh, medium density, but this is gonna make a great floor. So after this first eight is out and after all my uh, precast bricks are depleted, we're moving on to a high density floor. This is easily drilled. You can put pins in it to stand your parts up, whatever, and it is removable. It'll just slide in and out. So uh, we are switching to the, uh, the high density board for the floor. Um, you know what, let's go, I shot a little bit of video the other day, just looking around inside the control so you can see what's going on. You know, you're going to get these things and you go, you know, what's inside of that box? Let's see what's inside of there. So, uh, let's, let's cut to that. Okay. I thought I'd show you around inside the hot shot, uh, before we, uh, close it up and, uh, let you know what to be aware of inside and you know what's inside your unit. Uh, there's a thermocouple right there. I've marked all the negative terminals red. So that indicates that goes to the red wire. If you hook up your thermocouple backwards, it will run backwards. So when the oven heats, the, it'll drive the temperature controller down. Okay, so that's uh, there's your thermocouple connections. Uh, over here, you've got uh, this, the white box is the, uh, t the controller for the cooling fan. And it's got a dial on it. I currently have it set uh, just below 100 degrees, about 95 degrees, so that when the panel temperature comes up, the uh, fan will cycle. And it cycles nicely. Uh, that's what you hear in the background. I got one on the bench uh, uh, burning in right now. Uh, the red wire you see down there, there's a fuse holder. That black case where that red wire is going in. That is a fuse holder. So that's got a little 10 amp glass fuse, fast acting. That's for control only. That protects the temperature controller and the control section of the eye deck and the fan. So everything that uh, you know, everything that's low amperage is on that fuse. Uh, that little connector block down there. Uh, this little porcelain guy right here. Uh, you may want to you know check these every once in a while. Make sure that these stay tight. Uh, these are going to go through a lot of cycling, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, and that's what loosens terminals. So you can check those for, uh, for torque. All right. Um, I've made it so that the wire loom is long enough so you can put this cover on. See that we've got a screw right there holding it in. And it's got a piece of uh, masking tape to cushion the cover plate. Um, but I've made the wire loom long enough so you can just put the uh, cover plate on upside down and put the screw back in and work on this thing. Pretty easy. All you have to unplug are these two wires here. These are the two uh, power wires, and they go through this. Uh, this is a thermal overload switch in the cover. So right before you button it up, you know you undo your screw, get ready to put it on, plug these two in, drop your cover on. Pretty easy to work on. And I just thought I'd show you around inside of what your oven's got inside, and what maintenance you can do. 
you know if you don't think your cooling fans coming on often enough you can you can turn that dial a little bit so that you know you can tune it any way you like that's adjustable all the way from uh, oh, like 40 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit but uh, you know you're gonna get tired of hearing the fan but don't turn it up that's what's keeping this panel cool you know don't crank it all the way up but you know if it's if it's hot outside and the fan comes on for no reason with the oven not running you know you might want to tweak it up just a little bit just so you don't have nuisance uh, uh, cycles alrighty so that's inside the hot shot and uh, we'll look over here okay I thought you guys might want to see what happens when you fire an oven for the very first time this is uh, see how dark that floor is that thing is uh, uncured no brown ring just a fresh oven just plugged it in kale wool's not even burned in the door yet never been fired so let's uh fire it up for the first time we just plugged it into the wall and i've got a dual plug here but this is the receptacle you need that's the one with the neutrals the sideways neutral on it so those are the type you have to use and this is the plug you're going to be getting see the silver pin is uh, horizontal so that's the type of plug you got to use and uh, let's turn on control power here and what we're going to see on the display is uh, first it's going to show the revision so it's revision one standard um, we've got an 80 degree set point and a 76 degree temperature inside the oven let's, uh, let's start by taking our temp up um, I start the baking process at 400 degrees is where I begin all my um, begin all my baking so we do it at 400 for an hour and let everything run in and now we're going to give it a uh, run command run oops yes okay let's run okay we're running with it oh somehow I got to 401 that's just going to trigger my OCD there we go all right so now we've got we've got a run command you see the run lights on we've got output and now we're going to enable the heat see we, we don't see any heat coming up we're just going to hit heat enable and now we should start to see a rise and this is the very first firing of this oven so okay we got all, we got one whole degree 76 77 78 all right she's climbing Yep, she's climbing quick. Now, in here, you're going to see, you're already going to see smoke rolling out. You're going to see kind of some brown looking stuff in there. And it's burning out all the contaminants out of the uh, kale wool. And we're going to start uh, drying out that brick. But I'm going to bring you back after it's, uh, you know, I'm going to run it at 400 for about an hour. Then I'm going to take it to 600 and run it for about an hour. I'll bring you back around. I don't know. I'll bring you back around seven or eight hundred degrees after it's stable and show you how nasty it looks. And then we're going to take it all the way up to uh, uh, we're going to take it all the way up to fifteen hundred and show you uh, how the oven cleans and how it's purged by fire and how it gets uh, looking. Basically, after it's been fired at max temperature, uh, the oven just kind of cleans itself. So all the black stuff comes off of the kale wool. You get that brown ring around the outside, and that kind of tells you that you got a you're, you got a good door seal. You know your kale wool. You can see the imprint on the kale wool. How it's making the door seal. That tells you you got a good door seal on there. But uh, yeah, all right. I'll bring you back in a little while after that oven's fired for a while and show you how nasty it gets, and then how we clean it. So uh, that floor is getting nice and chalky white. My black ring has not moved to the outside yet, so we haven't burned all the junk out of the out of the kale wool board. That brown ring around there is pretty common. And I got another one over here cooking at a thousand. This one's still on its way up. I bring it up uh, 200 degrees an hour to cure the floors. That floor is not anywhere close to cured, and you can see the brown hasn't uh, really. <laughs> moved its way out yet so 
we're still on our way up there. Uh, it's just been kind of soaking at a thousand for about an hour. Okay, so now you know what's going on inside the uh, control box. You know the presence of the fuse, and you know about the maintenance on, uh, you know, that little porcelain connector block. Make sure those connections stay tight. You know, if you lose that connection, uh, you're gonna, it's gonna overheat at that connection. So um, those do need to stay tight. I would do that every uh, maybe six months initially, and then maybe annually after that, just to make sure they stay tight. All right, uh, these ovens have been fired. Um, you can tell by the brown ring around there. That oven's been taken all the way up. Um, these floors have been cured. So during my floor cure time, it gives me time to test the ovens, bring them up to temp, auto-tune the controllers, you know, do everything I need to do. Um, but uh, these things are ready to go out. All you guys that have prepaid and already paid your shipping, these things are just going to show up probably in the next week. So like I say, we're on the home stretch. Uh, those of you that uh, have put your down payment down, uh, I'm going to be sending emails out and letting you know that, hey, your oven's ready. And uh, how do you want to ship it? Do you want to pick it up? What are you going to do? Uh, and then we'll figure out shipping from there. Um, I don't have addresses on everybody, so I need to collect addresses from some of you guys so I can calculate your shipping for you. Uh, but these, uh, these first eight are ready to go. I got two over on the bench burning in right now and these uh, these five here are done and ready to go all right um, I would like to in closing I'd like to thank first of all I'd like to thank everybody that bought these and supported I'd like to thank uh, James Harrell at James Harrell design for the wonderful artwork on these on these cover plates uh, I'd like to thank Paul at ZT fabrication for doing my my plasma cutouts um, you can hardly tell that it's plasma cut. It, it almost looks like a laser. Uh, Paul's really good over at ZT Fab. Go visit him on the web at uh, a la carte .com. Um, You know, just, and everyone that kind of came together, I had a lot of people that helped me. You know, I had questions and I go to different places and they got answers, you know, so it helps me out a lot and I sure appreciate it. All right, guys, um, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.